Summary of Life of Pi by Jan Martel A fictional author goes to India and meets a man named Francis Adarubasamy, who tells him a very strange story. The author finds Piscine Molitor Patel, who is usually called Pi, in Canada and talks to him about the story. The rest of the story is told from Pi's point of view, with the author occasionally stopping to talk about his interviews with the adult Pi. In the 1970s, Pi grows up in the Indian city of Pondicherry. His name comes from a well-known swimming pool in Paris. Pi's father is a zookeeper, so he and his brother Ravi grow up around wild animals from all over the world. Pi's story often takes a break to talk about having animals in zoos, animal territories, and limits. His father shows him how dangerous wild animals can be by making him watch a tiger eat a goat. But Pi also learns that the most dangerous animal at a zoo is man. Pi was raised Hindu, but most of his family is not religious. As a young man, Pi becomes a dedicated Hindu. Later, he becomes a Christian and then a Muslim. Even though his parents and religious leaders told him not to, he follows all three faiths at the same time. The emergency causes political chaos in India, so Pai's parents decide to sell the zoo and move the family to Canada. They journey with many of the zoo animals on a Japanese cargo ship called the Tsimsum. One night, there is a blast, and the Tsimsum starts to sink. Some sailors throw Pai into a rowboat while he is still awake. The ship sinks, and Pai is the only person left alive. Pai sees Richard Parker, a tiger, and tells him to get on board. Pai ends up on the raft with a zebra, a hyena, and an orangutan named Orange Juice. The zebra is killed and eaten by the hyena. The hyena then fights Orange Juice and kills it. Richard Parker is still in the boat, hiding under a tarp, which Pai sees. Richard Parker kills the hyena, so Pai and the tiger are left alone. Pai makes himself a raft and finds supplies in the rowboat. He then uses a whistle to mark his area and start taming Richard Parker. Pai catches fish and turtles, kills them, and eats them. He also filters seawater and gathers rainwater. Even though they are always hungry, Pai and Richard Parker each have their own space in the raft and live there happily. As the months go by, Pai can't keep track of time. He remembers things like when he saw a whale, went through a lightning storm, and saw a ship go by. Pai temporarily loses his sight and hears a voice speaking to him. At first, he thinks it's Richard Parker, but then he figures out that it's another blind survivor. Then they bring their boats together and talk about food. The stranded person attacks Pai because he wants to kill and eat him. The castaway is killed by Richard Parker. Later, the boat comes to a strange island made of algae and populated by thousands of meerkats. Richard Parker and Pi stay there for a while and get better. One day, Pi finds a tree whose fruit is made of human teeth. This shows him that the island eats meat. Pi and Richard Parker decide to leave. The boat finally ends up on a beach in Mexico. Richard Parker runs off into the forest without looking back, and some locals save Pi. The last part is a copy of a talk between Pai and two Japanese officials who are trying to figure out why the Tsimsum sank. They don't believe Pai when he tells them his story. He then tells them a second story in which the animals are replaced by people. In this version, Pai is on the raft with a French cook, a Chinese sailor, and his own mother. When the man dies, the cook eats him. In the end, Pai's mother is killed by the cook, and Pai then kills the cook. The government workers are shocked, but they believe this story. They notice that the hyena is the cook, the zebra is the sailor, orange juice is Pi's mother, and Richard Parker is Pi. When Pi asks the officials which story they like best, they say that the one with animals is their favorite. In their final report, they praise Pi for being able to stay alive on a boat with a tiger. About the author Jan Martel was born to French-Canadian parents in Spain. Martel's father was a diplomat, and during Martel's childhood, the family moved to Costa Rica, France, Mexico, and Canada. He learned both French and English as a child. Martel went to Trent University in Ontario to study philosophy. 
After that, he spent a year in India going to holy places and zoos. His first three books didn't get much attention from critics or readers. But when Life of Pi came out in 2001, Martel became famous all over the world, and in 2002, he won the Man Booker Prize. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.